The biblical authors who wrote before the exile thought of the God of Israel's sovereignty on earth as limited to the nation of Israel. Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. And prior to the exile, every nation was thought to be ruled over by their own patron deity. And we see this referenced in a bunch of different ways. For instance, in Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9, it says, The Most High divided up the peoples according to the number of the B'nai Elohim, the children of God. And Adonai's portion was his people, Jacob, his share of the inheritance. And you see the land of Israel referred to as the inheritance of Adonai a number of times in the Hebrew Bible. So Adonai was thought to be the patron deity of the people and the land of Israel, and their sovereignty ended at the borders of Israel. And this also is reflected in a bunch of different ways. For instance, the Syrian general Naaman comes down and is healed in the Jordan River, and he wants to worship Adonai when he's back in Syria. But how do you worship a deity who can only be worshipped on Israelite soil if you're not on Israelite soil? He takes two cartloads of Israelite soil back to Syria with him. And you might be thinking, well, that's just a foreigner's perspective. That's not how Israelites think. And that's not accurate. When Saul is pursuing David, David is in the wilderness of Zin, and he is shouting across the valley at Saul, saying that Saul's men have pushed him out of Adonai's inheritance, saying, go worship other gods. In other words, David cannot worship Adonai if David is outside of Adonai's inheritance. And the exiled Judahites in Babylon sit on the side of the river and say, who can sing the songs of Adonai in a foreign land? And probably one of the most fascinating examples of this is in 2 Kings 3, where Adonai leads an Israelite, Judahite, Edomite coalition into Moab in order to punish Moab for throwing off vassalage. And Adonai has promised the coalition victory, but they fail when they have the king trapped in his capital city and the king cannot escape. The king offers his heir to the throne as a sacrifice on the city wall. And the very next thing the text says is that there was great fury against Israel and they got up and left. And this is exactly how Sennacherib's retreat from his siege of Jerusalem is described when he invades Judah to try to punish Hezekiah for throwing off vassalage. And while there have been different apologetic attempts to try to skirt the plain sense of the text, the idea is that the sacrifice worked and catalyzed the intervention of Moab's patron deity, Chemosh who drove out the invading force. Adonai was outside of their inheritance. They were outside of the land on which they were sovereign. They lost home court advantage, and Adonai was beaten and driven out. Now, once we get into the exile, we have the Exodus story, where Adonai proclaims that they have judged the gods of Egypt, which is an example of Adonai getting outside of the territory of their sovereignty, but successfully defeating the gods of the nation they were in. And that's probably because that's coming in the exilic period. And in the exilic and the post-exilic period, we see different ideas developing for how Adonai can reach their people outside of the land of Israel. For instance, in Ezekiel 1, we have Adonai mobilizing their throne by traveling on a throne that sits on a platform that is carried by these wheels and these living beings. In Psalm 82, we have the gods of the nations being deposed and condemned to mortality for allowing the exile to happen. And then the psalmist in the very last verse calls on Adonai to rise up, inherit all nations. In other words, the patron deities are no longer in control of all the nations of the earth. Now you can be exalted over all the earth and directly rule over all nations. This is the exaltation of Adonai over all the earth, which probably happens in the late exilic or the post-exilic period. So prior to the exile, Adonai's sovereignty is limited to the land of Israel. And when they engage in military excursions outside of their home court, they don't always win, as we see in 2 Kings 3. But that relationship gets renegotiated following the exile so that people who live outside the land of Israel can access Adonai's power and agency and can worship the God of Israel wherever they happen to be. And the fit for this video has been the Has Been Hotel.